The business models of television are changing, media is changing, and these guys that we have here on the panel are pioneers that are implementing new technology to find new ways to bring content to their fans and their audiences. So I'd like to introduce our distinguished group of panelists, and I'm going to read some bios because these guys are pretty awesome. And uh, you're going to be impressed with what you hear. I'm going to introduce Jeff Jacobs. Jeff is with MTV. He's the Vice President of Production Planning, Strategic Initiatives, and Business Operations for the MTV Music Group, which includes VH1, MTV, CMT, and Logo. We're honored to have Jeff. So Don Sperling is the Vice President and Executive Producer for Giants Entertainment. Don oversees all television, radio, digital media, publishing, creative services, brand marketing, events, and live game entertainment presentation for the Giants. We have some heavy hitters here, so it's pretty exciting. We have Sean Smith. Sean is the senior vice president. He's the vice president of business development and also the chief marketing officer for the NBA Development League. He's currently in his fourth year with the NBA family, and Sean is responsible for collaborative ventures in league marketing partnerships, broadcast digital content, team business development, and league expansion initiatives, helping the NBA Development League more than double its size in the past four seasons. One challenge Sean continues to address is maximizing exposure and revenue generating opportunities while minimizing cost. And we're really honored to have Sean Smith from Thanks. the NBA Development League here with us tonight. And, our, and our, our last panelist is Peter Himmelman. Peter is a, a, he's truly a multifaceted musician. He's critically lauded as a rock troubadour, Grammy-nominated creator of children's music, and an Emmy-nominated film and television composer. His most recent project includes a rock and roll variety show called The Furious World. Go to furiousworld.com to check that out, and we're very honored to have Peter Himmelman here on this panel. And now, that, that, that introduces our panelists. I'd like to introduce the moderator of our panel tonight, Eric Schumacher Rasm Rasmussen. Did I did it? He's the editor of StreamingMedia.com and Streaming Media Magazine, and he's been a music and technology journalist for over 20 years and has written for EventDV, eMedia, and MTV.com. And at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Eric so you guys can learn some amazing things from these panelists. Well, thank you, Philip. Clearly, I need to work on extending that bio. Um, <laughs> Start it off. Thank you. And you know, working for StreamingMedia.com, one of the most exciting things in the last few years has been watching the way that live event broadcasting and production, you know, has really gone from being the domain of big networks, big organizations, to the point where anyone can do it. And there's so many tools out there that are enabling that to happen. And uh, obviously, a number of them are on display here at NAB. Obviously, the New Tech TriCaster is one of them. And I'd like to thank New Tech for inviting me to uh, moderate this and for putting together such a great panel. Uh, I'm going to ask each of our panelists uh, a question directed individually to begin with. And then uh, uh, it'll turn into more of a roundtable discussion. And uh, if I have any chance of staying on script, um, I think it went out the window about five minutes ago. So I'd like to start with Jeff from MTV. Now, an organization like MTV clearly has the resources to, um, to capture and create content just about any way that you want to. But you choose using technology like the TriCaster to do portable live production for particular uh, types of content. What does it allow you to do that you couldn't do otherwise? You know, when, when, when you hear portability, when you're walking around the trade show and you see backpacks and, 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 uh, and, uh, and Pelican boxes, you know, portability, I get that portability to a lot of people is I want to carry it on and stow it in the, in the, in the aircraft, in the airplane, or I want to check luggage. Portability to us uh, for a show like a Hills After Show or an ABDC or a red carpet show that we use it for, portability is, to me, not having to file city permits to put a 70,000 pound truck on a street in Marlboro, New Jersey when we're doing something in a backyard. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Now, now, Don, with the New York Giants, clearly you've got an NFL team that has a, a fan base that's probably even more rabid than the average NFL team's fan base. They're clamoring for content, uh, content that might not necessarily be economical to deliver to them with traditional broadcast. What kind of content are you delivering uh, online using TriCaster? 
Well, I would say the key word for what we do and how we use the triglycerin, it's really about access and giving our fans access, immediate access, access on a, on a live basis, access on a live to the tape basis, on a feature basis to our brand and to our players. This is the kind of thing we're trying to do. We're trying to break down the wall. People, there are Giants fans all over the country, all over the world. And this is their way to feel a part of that club that goes to the games and touch the Giants. Now, Sean, uh, for, the, uh, for the NBA Development League, you're faced with uh, some different challenges than a New York Giants that's already got this huge, rabid fan base. Your, I imagine one of your you know, charters is to build the brand, build the fan base for the NBA D-League. How does live and on-demand video help you do that? Well, Eric, certainly a good point. I mean, we're not the New York Giants, uh, but it's, it's very important for us on two levels to make sure that we become uh, relevant. So that's really a big word for us, is the relevancy of our league. There's so much basketball out there, between the NBA, between college basketball, the international basketball landscape. So we look at this in two buckets, nationally and locally. Because of the TriCaster, we're able to position ourselves nationally in a variety of different ways. Number one, online. You can watch our games live for free online, every single game that we do. Secondly, on a local level, it's very, very important for our teams. Teams can take this content and they have their whistle-to-whistle -whistle broadcast that they can now negotiate local broadcast deals like never before because there's zero cost. So nationally and locally, this is very, very important to us. And then the monetization of that, I'm sure we'll talk about later as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Peter, in addition to being the only one of us who has asked for an autograph on the way down to the panel, um, you've got this great online, weekly online show called Furious World. Um, and I think you're a great example of, of, of how the music industry has changed so much in the last 10, 15 years. What made you decide to put your energy and your time into doing this weekly live online show rather than doing what people, I guess, more expect musicians to do? I had this idea because all I do is I come up with ideas, whether they're music, and that's kind of how I put food on my family's table. I had this idea, why not make films about like a green pepper. What does it mean to our lives or, or water? What are these things that we think we know? Well, how does a child look at water? I called it the re-mystification. Whereas uh, water, I know it. Trying to create a sense of awe about commonplace things again. I started to make these little films. I taught myself how to edit. And the guy that works for me while I was doing the TV stuff named Mark Jacobs, who couldn't be here, he had a bad cold, didn't want to fly or something. He said, well, we can do this broadcast uh, and you could broadcast it out to all your fans. What are you talking about? This is my dream to do like a hologram and not have to leave home. You know, it'd be great. I have kids and who wants to leave? And we broadcast this little thing from the studio is it like a volcano happening? Is that me? I like that sound. I have to use it. Anyway, we broadcast from the studio to the office. And I'm like, oh my god. And we started doing this, and it got serious. Then I wrote a theme song. I charged myself 25 grand, which is the, the rate. That's the rate for a theme song. And it went from one pocket to the next. And I wrote this song, Furious World, I hear it rocking. And then I couldn't think of a, a, song, a, a, a name for the show. And some guy goes, well, that's simple, Furious World. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. And then it became a thing. And, and uh, it's something that I find really exciting.